In this video, we'll learn how to combine what we've learned so far about animations by creating a cutscene. Cutscenes can be a fun way to create a short animated sequence for a game. We'll use a camera animation and three rigged characters to mimic the starting of a scene to a zombie game. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio Code in a class called Cutscene. Now in this class, we're gonna be combining a few different things that we've learned so far with animations. This will involve using rigged characters. So we're gonna have a total of three different characters that have animations. And we're also gonna combine that with a custom animation that we create inside of Babylon.js for the camera. This will be a cutscene type of animation where we move the camera from right to left. And we're gonna be focusing on looking at the different actors in this scene. This will be the main character. And then we're also gonna have a couple of zombie characters as well. Now, along with this, we're also gonna combine this with custom logic to determine when the animation finishes or when the cutscene finishes, where they're going to regain control of the camera. This is to mimic the effect of stopping all control when we go into a cutscene and then finally regaining that control after we're done with the cutscene to start moving the character around. But in this case, we're just gonna focus on moving the camera around. All right, so with all that said, let's get started. At the very top of this class, I do wanna reference the character animations. So these are all the animations that are attached to the hero character. And I'm using this as an animation group array. Remember the animation groups that come with the GOV file comes in an animation group array. And I wanna be able to stop and start the animations in that array. So we're gonna create a reference to that up here. We also want to ensure that we can control the camera. So by default, we're not attaching control to the camera quite yet until the cutscene has finished playing. We are gonna be animating the camera. So once that cutscene is done, we can then regain the control. So I wanna have access to the camera after that's done. In our constructor, we have a couple of methods for the characters. One is for the main character. We looked at this before. And then the create zombies is nearly identical to the create character with the difference being that we have multiple characters in that method. In our create scene, I am referencing the camera here. And you'll note that we do not attach control to it here. I did modify a few settings, but I will not have control of the camera until we're done with the animation of that camera. We'll take a brief look at the create character. You'll notice that in here, I am using the rotate, but I'm rotating this to face it to the left. So now the character, the main character of our scene here is gonna be pointing to the left. We're gonna be looking at these characters from a side view. So by using negative math.pi divided by two, I can essentially rotate this along the Y axis, negative 90 degrees. The starting position will be nearly all the way to the right in our scene. So I have a positive X axis of eight, zero along the Y and negative four along the Z axis. And here I'm assigning the animation groups to this dot character animations. I can then stop the first animation from playing, which is the idle animation in this case. And then I'm playing the first animation, which is a new animation. That is an animation of the character looking scared. So I want that to play when we're playing the cutscene. Let's take a look at the create zombies. Now in our create zombies, it's nearly identical, except here I'm not deconstructing anything. I'm not going into the meshes or the animation groups because we have a total of two zombies in here. So I'm referencing zombie one up here. There it is. And zombie two down here. And now you'll find these in the public models folder. So we have the character. This is a modified version of the same character we looked at in a previous video. And then down below that, we see zombie one and zombie two. Now, both these zombies only have one animation. And you'll notice that I'm not actually playing the animation or stopping it in this case. I just want that default animation to play over and over again. Same thing as the character. I'm rotating the characters, in this case, these zombies to the right this time, and I'm using a positive 90 degrees here. So math.pi divided by two. And again, I'm rotating along the Y axis and I reposition these on the other side. So I want the camera to go from right to left. The zombies will not appear on camera until we get to this specific point. So I set these to a negative eight, zero and negative four. And then for the other zombie, I staggered it out a bit and I have them at negative six and negative two along the Z axis. Okay, so now we've gone over some of the basics of what we're starting off with. Now let's create the animation for the camera. So I'm gonna create a separate method for this and I'll just call it create cutscene. 
Okay, so we created a method called create cutscene. Right now it's set to a return type of void. We are gonna modify this in a moment, but for now let's just start off by creating the animation for the camera. Okay, so remember all of our keyframes are gonna be within an array, so we're gonna call it cam keys. Okay, let's also provide the FPS, which is again, the frames per second. You can adjust it to your own liking. I'm gonna stick with 60 in this case. And then we need to create an animation. For the camera, we just want the position to be modified. So we're gonna go from the right to the left. So let's create a new animation for this. I'll just call it cam anim. And I'll set that equal to a new animation. Now, again, be aware, don't select the first one that pops up. You wanna make sure that you get the one that's coming from Babylon JS Core. Okay, so let's give this a name and I'm gonna call it the same theme, cam anim. Next, we need to provide the target property. So remember the target property is what we're trying to modify with this animation. In my case, I wanna modify the position of the camera. So we'll type in position as a string. The frames per second will be FPS, which we already declared up above. Next, we need to provide the data type. Now with position, this is a vector three. So we're gonna say animation dot, and we're looking for the vector three type. Now for this animation, I want this to play once and then stop. So for the loop mode, we're gonna have this set to constant. So animation dot, and we're looking for loop mode of constant. Now at the very end, you'll see that we have enable blending. Let's go ahead and turn that on. I'll set that to true. Now enable blending in this case will allow us to essentially go from where the camera is currently at to blending into this animation. So we're gonna get this really cool blending effect of the camera kind of swooping down onto our character. And we'll take a look at that in a moment once we actually reposition the camera. Okay, so we declared the camera animation, the FPS and the cam keys. Now let's go and create our actual keyframes. So cam keys dot push. Okay, now the value for the starting position of the camera, I want this to be at the position of where the character is at. So let's jump up to where we created the character. And you can see I set the position here to eight, zero and negative four. I'm just gonna copy this real quick. Now, obviously we don't want this to be at the exact same position. Otherwise we won't be able to actually see our character. So what I'm gonna do here is modify just the Z axis and I'll set that equal to a negative eight and we can play around with this if need be. So we're gonna go with eight, zero, negative eight. This will start off at the position of the character. Okay, we'll save that real quick. Let's continue with this cam keys dot push. And we're gonna have this based off seconds. So let's add in a frame. And this time I want the animation from going from left to right to equal about five seconds. So an easy way to do that is to write out five times our FPS. Now regardless of what our FPS is, this right here will basically make it so it's five seconds. So we're going from frame zero to this, that is a total of five seconds. And then a the value for that is gonna be a new vector three. And this will be nearly identical to what we have up above, but this time we're moving to the left. I'm gonna copy this as well, and actually just replace this. And we're gonna go with a negative eight. Okay, so we're moving all the way to the left and we're keeping the values for the other axis values in here for the Y and the Z to where they're at. And when we get to the left, I then want to stop there for a few seconds. So once again, I'm just gonna copy this this time. And let's say I wanna wait three seconds at the end point where we're looking at the zombies. So I'll change the five in here to a value of eight. It's now going between five and eight, but it's gonna be three seconds. And we're not gonna change the value here because I wanna stay at that position for three seconds. After that, I then want to zoom out and essentially go into a view where I know that the player is now going to have control of the camera. So we're gonna zoom out a bit. Let's go and copy this once again. Okay, now going between the eight and the zoom out, how long do I want that to be? Let's just go ahead and set this up to a value of, let's go with 12. So we'll make this four seconds. So going between eight and 12, that's four seconds. I then want to pan out. So the position here, I'll set this down to zero. So we're going back to the center point of the world. And then for the Y axis, we'll maybe move this back out a bit further up. So maybe go up to a value of say three. So we're slightly above the characters. We're kind of looking down at them. 
And then for the Z axis, I don't want this to be negative eight. That's a little too close to the character. Maybe we'll bring this out to a value of negative 14. Okay, and again, we can come back to this and tweak it as need be. But now we have a couple of frames that we can use. Let's go ahead and add this to the animation. So camanim dot set keys. And we're gonna pass in cam keys. Okay, remember this is a multi-step process. So we create the keys, we assign them to the animation, but now the animation needs to be attached to the camera as well. So now I can say this dot camera dot animations, which is also an array dot push. And I wanna push in cam anim. Okay, so now we can start playing this animation. We'll give this a quick test. A quick way to test this out is to say this, that scene, that begin animation. Now remember, begin animation will play all the animations that are attached to this object. Whereas with begin direct animation, we can specify which animations we wanna play. Now in our case, since we just have one animation, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. It's gonna be nearly identical in terms of how this would be used. So begin animation will work just fine. The target is gonna be our camera. So this our camera. Then we need to say from and then to. Well, we wanna go between zero and this. So we're gonna end up at this frame. I know that is the ending frame, so I'm just gonna copy this. So we're going between zero and then whatever we get out of this. So 12 times our FPS. And we could specify an actual hard-coded value in here, but I could come back up here and change the FPS. So that makes it very easy to modify. Next, we have looping. Now, in this case, I don't want this to loop at all. So I'm just gonna use a default and not even include that. Okay, so we just want this playing once and then ending. So let's give this a quick test. Let's see how this works. Let's make sure that we can call this up above. This.create cutscene. Okay, let's take a look at this in the browser. Okay, so there is our cutscene. You can see the camera goes down too far down. And maybe it goes a little bit too far to the left. And that final pullout looks fine. Maybe pull it out a bit further out. So we need to modify some of the frame values. And I think everything else looks good as is. So let's go back to our code and let's make those modifications. Okay, going back into our create cutscene, we can see that the Y axis here is set down to zero. So the camera essentially appears in the ground. Let's actually bump this up to a value of two. And we'll leave that last one at three. That is the camera pulling out. So maybe pull it out a bit further. So right now we're going negative 14. Let's bump this up to say negative 16. So I want both the zombies and the hero character to be within frame of the camera. So we'll save that. Once again, we'll take a look at this in the browser. Okay, so you can see how it kind of zooms in. It blends in with the animation. We're going from right to left. Then finally we've had out we take a look at these zombies, any character at the same time. Okay, so I'm happy with that for the most part. You can continue to tweak that to your own liking. You understand the process of how to do this with the camera. Now at the very end, I wanna be able to control the camera. So once we end the cutscene, I then want to be able to either control the character or the camera. And we can do this with the weight async of the animation of the camera. Let's go back in and let's take a look at how we can modify that so we get control of the camera at the very end of our cutscene. Going back to our create cutscene, we'll jump down to the very bottom of this method. Now right here, this is where we play the animation. And I want to wait for this animation to finish playing. We only have one animation attached to the camera. Once that has finished, I then want to attach control to the camera. I also want to play a different animation for the main character. So let's take a look at how we can do that. Now, if you remember the begin animation here returns an animatable. And with this, I can use something called dot wait async. Now, obviously this is waiting asynchronously. So we need to make sure that we set our method up to be asynchronous as well. So async TypeScript will complain if we don't include the promise here. Okay, so now we have a method that is asynchronous and I'm gonna say await. And then if you remember from a previous video, we could also use something called an on animation end function. So I can either do something on animation end, or in this case, since we're already waiting for this to finish, what we can do is everything we want after that. So we know that once this gets called, 
and we're done with this, we're then gonna go to the next line and then we can do anything we want with the camera, with the characters, anything of that sort. And what I'll do in here in this case is I'll actually create a separate method that we'll call right after this. And what I'll do is I'll call it end cutscene. Okay, in the end cutscene, what I want to do, first off, I want to enable the camera control. So I'm gonna say this.camera.attach control. I also want to stop the animation that's currently being played on the character. That is gonna be the character animations one. That is that animation of the character looking scared. I then want to play the first animation, which is character animation zero, which is an idle animation. So what I'll do is actually just copy both of these. We'll place them below. Now in this case, if I were to play this first animation, the zero, if I were to play that, that will essentially override anything that's happening with the second animation. But whenever possible, I would recommend you stopping an animation and then playing a new animation. So in my case, I want to stop this animation and then play this one. So in here, I'm gonna say dot stop and dot play. And just so you have these in the correct order, I wanna stop this animation first and then I wanna play the idle animation. And I'm gonna call this after the await or the begin animation. This kind of acts similarly to the way that we would call this within the on animation end. It's just a slightly different way of doing this. So we're gonna say end cutscene. And we'll give this another quick try in the browser. Okay, so right away you can see our character went into the idle animation. And if I left click in here, I can look around, no problem. Now this is where I would then have access to control the character around. If I did have a character controller, I could attack these zombies, maybe they would attack me. And that would all happen after we end that cutscene. Now you will notice that the animation for the character switching between the scared state into the idle animation was very abrupt. That's something we'll take a look at in subsequent videos when we take a look at blending and being able to go from one animation to another very smoothly. But there you have it. Now you have a basic animation for a cutscene.